Hey, what's up, guys? It's Tommy here from saleslucky.com, and today I was reading the essay called Compensation by Emerson. I don't know if you guys have read that essay before, but it is one dense and hard to read essay, okay? So, Emerson is by far one of my uh, favorite writers that I like to read. Very, very deep guy. Resonate with him and his words a lot. I'm sure as a lot of people do. Uh, but his work is just kind of tough to read a lot of times. Um, and I have to read it with a dictionary uh, open on another tab. And um, frequently he uses words in, in ways that haven't been used in about more than a century. So um, kind of have to put the pieces together uh, to understand his message, but it's well worth it. So today I wanted to write a post about, you know, what is Emerson talking about in his uh, essay compensation? What is he talking about and how does it relate to sales? So in a nutshell, he talks about the law of compensation. So there's a couple different meanings from this. Um, I'll cover you know, th three meanings that I took away from this essay, which was the law of reciprocity, the law of cause and effect, and the law of duality. Okay, So with the law of reciprocity, and this is reciprocity is one of the pillars of influence mentioned in Robert Robert Cialdini's book Influence. Highly recommend that book as well. Okay, um, so reciprocity just means I do something for somebody, and as a result, I get that back. I do something, and that that person does the same thing for me. So this is incred incredibly important in sales and influence because when you offer something of value to somebody you then have the right to ask for something in return. And this is something that's done in sales a lot. Okay, let's say, for example, I give you a sample. Let's say you go to Costco. You, 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 you're you given a sample. Do you think that because they are giving out so many sam samples to different people that people are more inclined to reciprocate and buy more of their product? Well, yeah, right? Yeah, if, if you give out samples, people, there's going to be a greater likelihood of people reciprocating and buying your product. So that's one example. Uh, like in a previous role, what we used to do was cold call and then offer a sample, a sample product or sample report, and, and, and then inducing the law of reciprocity, I would give them the sample and say, if I give you this, is it okay if I follow up for some feedback next week to, um, yeah, to hear your feedback? So I'm, I'm giving and I'm getting, okay? And this happens throughout the sales process all the time, continuously, whether you're giving a sample and you're asking for feedback or you're providing a, a price quote and you're asking for um, you know, thoughts on, uh, by your prospect's manager, what they think about your resource or product, um, you're getting that feedback, or it could be you're providing a free trial, but then in return, uh, in reciprocation, you're getting the permission to collect the data to create a successful business case to help your prospect buy your product. Okay, so not only is this, is this happening at the large level, at the high level, this is also happening at a micro level where in a conversation, as you pay attention to your prospect, your pro while your prospect is talking, your prospect will be much more inclined to pay attention to you when you talk about your product or um, you decide uh, in a sales conversation, you decide to be real, be vulnerable, be genuine and, and, and share the truth with your prospect. Well, don't you think that's going to create trust and that's going to uh, create a greater likelihood of inducing reci reciprocation where they then trust you and then they share with you sensitive or vulnerable information or, or uh, are more real with you? 
So, the, you know, that's the law of reciprocity, and it's very much similar to the law of cause and effect, okay? So, um, law of cause and effect, just saying, you know, every reaction or every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Um, and then lastly, he talks about the law of duality um, within that essay, which just means for everything, there's an equal and opposite for that, okay? North, south, um, male, female, low tide, high tide, summer, spring. Um, so his one of his ideas is that whenever you do something, let's say make a prospecting call, make a a uh, phone call or uh, you know do a web demonstration he's saying within that action because of the law of cause and effect within that action there is the response to that action inherent in that action so what does that mean basically it means if you're putting in the work if you are grinding and even though it doesn't seem like those cold calls or those demos you've been doing haven't been paying off, what Emerson is saying is that they are paying off and they will pay off. And even though you might not have the fruits to your actions right this moment, they are going to pay off in time. Whether it, they pay off in direct sales from those direct interactions or it could be references made or it could be experience gained or it could be knowledge gained in your particular marketplace. He, what he's saying that no action is left un- um, Un kind of gifted or un un ungiven like every action has its equal and opposite reaction. So when if you're doing good works, you're gonna be compensated by that either directly or indirectly over time. Again, it might not happen right away. So if you feel like you're banging that phone, making a ton of calls, doing a ton of demos, doing a ton of discovery calls, but you're not seeing the fruits right away, that's normal. Like. You're gonna, it's gonna pay off in time through your experience or direct sales or or some other way, okay? And then the other manifestation of this is that he's saying the law of compensation. So two things. He's saying one, whenever you see, let's say, for example, a rich person driving off in a Ferrari or Lamborghini, what we see is the fruit. You, I'm sure you guys have heard this before with the iceberg, you know, what you see is the ice on top. What you don't see is all the stuff on the bottom. But what you don't what you don't see is the sacrifice and the work that person put in to get that stuff. The law of compensation. Light and dark, right? The fruits and then the labor, the sacrifices. Also, he's talking about how in every disadvantage, in every infirmity, in every uh, struggle and pain, there, therein lies the seeds of an equivalent greater benefit or therein lies the seeds of the fruit within that pain and suffering. So I'll show with you a personal example relevant to sales. And maybe you guys have read on my blog already, but... You know, growing up, being in high schoolish uh, years, I felt a lot of pain around my communication skills and interpersonal skills, social skills. Just had a lot of anxiety around that, um, and just whenever I had to engage in a situation like that where it required communication or interpersonal skills, I just felt a lot of friction, a lot of pain around that. Okay. So much so that it really was the driving force for me to go out and 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 try to good at get good at sales and get good at communicating and influencing people. Okay, so that initial pain, which was not pleasant, is the same thing that drove me to get good in this area. And now, because of that, after number of years, 
I've developed a skill set in this area, which now I consider a strength of mine. Okay, so the law of compensation. Whenever nature gives you gives you something shitty, in that shitty thing is something that you'll be able to find and use to make into something great. Okay, it's up to you to find it. It's up to you to turn that shitty thing into into gold, alchemy. Um, and I thoroughly believe that that ability to take what is shitty. Um, and make it into a benefit or an advantage, uh, uh, an asset is a defining characteristic of everyone who's successful. Didn't plan for this, but you know I've got this tattoo on my forearm here, inside of my forearm. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it it's it's two Chinese characters. It's Wei Ji in Chinese. Basically, it means crisis. It's the same concept here. Crisis. It's two characters. But if you break it apart, let's see here, the first character is way, it comes from danger. Danger, okay? The second character, G, comes from opportunity. So together it's crisis. But if you break it apart, half of it's danger and the other half is opportunity. So in every crisis, there's danger and there's opportunity. So if you're going through a situation where you're struggling, understand the law of compensation says in that struggle itself has the natural ingredients to for you to turn it into something great. Uh, it's like what Napoleon Hill said: in every adversity, there in every adversity, there's a seed of an equivalent or greater opportunity. Okay, so just want to shoot this quick video. Highly recommend you guys go ahead and read Compensation by Emerson. Study it, understand it. Read uh, Influence by Cialdini. And then, uh, of course, my man Napoleon Hill, all his books. All right. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys got some value out of this. And uh, as always, please comment, subscribe, um, share, and uh, love to hear your feedback. All right, guys, take care.